Hey guys, welcome back to my video. For this week, I will be making another cake and I'm going to be basing it off of The Green Knight, the character from the movie, The Green Knight. Um, if you're unfamiliar, it came out about a year ago and it's based off of Arthurian legend, AKA King Arthur, the Knights of the Round Table and all that jazz I'm sure that you're familiar with. So in this specific movie scene that I'll be referencing, King Arthur, um, his knights, as well as his nephew Gawain, or Gawain, however you choose to pronounce it, are celebrating over dinner when all of a sudden a very dark and mysterious figure enters the dining hall, and that is the Green Knight. Green as in he is all green in color. And in the movie, he's actually kind of tree-ish looking. The Green Knight then presents a challenge. He will allow for any man to come and strike him as long as in like one year and one day's time that man then visits his green chapel where the man will receive that same blow back. The main character Gawain then decides that he will accept this challenge okay. and he foolishly cuts off the Green Knight's head. Ah! Foolishly because he is then doomed to receive that same deadly wound in a year. But specifically one part of the scene when the Green Knight has his severed head in his own hands and he begins to speak and reminds him of the challenge's stipulation. That really was imprinted into my brain, but I just loved it so much. I thought it was a very ambitious decision to make, but as of now, I have a couple of cakes under my belt. Um, I also looked up some like tips and tricks and steps that I should have been taking anyways um, during my cake making journey that I feel a little bit more confident. And honestly, I'm just super like, I'm just really dying to make this cake, to be honest. So just to reiterate, the cake will actually be the severed Green Knight's head. Um, Nerve wracking to think about, but all super exciting. So let's get to baking. So I have everything out ready to go in terms of making the actual cake. Um, just a few different approaches. I looked online and in order to have a more firm cake, because mine was a little too moist and fluffy, which I know that's what people like to eat, but when it comes to sculpting, that's probably like not the best consistency to have. Um, and I heard that if you reduce the amount of oil in your cake, it should become more firm. Um, instead of eggs, I'm also using applesauce. It's a quarter cup per egg. In terms of color, I finally invested in this like set of gel paste food coloring instead of just like this liquid kind, I'm guessing. And like, and you can tell like which one's the more professional one out of the two. I want to make the Green Knight like a really vibrant green on the inside. And this one's just going to make it kind of pastel-ish. So I thought it's a good time to purchase something that'll like, you know, really give me what I want. Besides the color for the actual flavoring of the cake, I was trying to think of something that reminded me of nature, a more natural flavor, definitely not like funfetti or something. Um, and I thought of like cinnamon because his face looks like it's made out of bark. And then that just made me think of like apple cinnamon or apple spice because I do like pumpkin spice a lot. Um, so I thought I'd do like a mixture of um, pumpkin spice spices like clove, nutmeg, um, I have two nutmegs, allspice, and then also make a cinnamon apple compote to go with it. Um, I'll be making still a cinnamon buttercream, but also putting that apple compote on the inside. So I'm thinking that's gonna be pretty good. Fingers crossed. What? Like my previous cake, I'm using the Pillsbury Pure White Cake Mix. I like it because I could add my own flavorings to it and customize it very easily. So here I'm adding a bunch of nutmeg and clove, allspice, and a whole bunch of cinnamon. Instead of eggs, I'll be using that applesauce as a replacement. Um, you'll see me fail trying to get out the applesauce with this scoop, but I managed to figure it out. I did add a little bit of oil, but I only used half the amount. Um, in the other layers, I actually used none at all. 
I'm adding this gel green food coloring. This is also another reason why I like to use the white cake mix because the color just comes out a lot cleaner as opposed to using a cake mix that already has some coloring to it. I just have to pause real quick and be really honest. So you see me like pouring the batter into this rectangular pan and I was pretty confident at this point that I knew what I was doing but I will actually be scrapping this version of the cake. It just didn't turn out how I liked, and you'll see me do that later on in the video. Um, I thought working off of a rectangle um, was a better idea, and only using one box of cake mix would be enough. But here I am uh, making my apple compote. This wasn't a mistake. Um, I managed to save this, thankfully, because it was kind of a process. I should have just used a paring knife to peel this apple, but I thought, hey, I have a peeler. Let's just kind of run with this. Um, so for the apple compote, I used about an apple and a half. I then diced it into very small cubes so that they wouldn't be too chunky in my cake. Oh, and then you'll see me take out this cake. Just letting it cool while I ventured on with my apple compote. Um, so yeah, it's just like making a jam. It's really simple. The thickening agent you actually use is cornstarch, um, but the end result was actually really nice. I still have some of it in my fridge and I plan to slowly chip away at it because it is so delicious. Next up was the buttercream frosting and I was determined to make sure that the texture of this frosting was right and I followed a recipe to a T. Unfortunately, a lot of this frosting was wasted on the first failed attempt at my cake, but I was really happy to finally get that creamy smooth texture that wasn't too like stodgy and difficult to work with. I just need to make sure to pay better attention to recipes. still working on the failed cake attempt um, but I just want to be really transparent about what my first thought process was versus what I ended up doing later. I was really happy with the cake sponge and you'll see me start to add the layers with this very successful buttercream. So I alternated from sponge to buttercream to apple compote. My layers were looking neat, but as I put on the very last layer of sponge on top, I realized, hey, this might be a little small, and a few doubts were definitely running through my brain at this point. I began to carve away at this cake regardless because I was using the motivation that I magically had for this day, and you'll see my husband sneak away some of the scraps that I had carved off the cake. Um, and this is really where I thought, like, oh, am I going to be able to get a face out of this sculpt? And no, I just determined that it was too small to work with. Um, I needed something a bit sturdier and on a bigger scale. And here I am redoing the cake. So you see that I decided to choose um, the rounded cake pans instead of rectangular. And I used three boxes of cake mix. Um, the reason why I did three instead of two, I realized when you don't use oil and you don't use uh, egg, that the cake doesn't rise as much. So it is sturdier, but it lends for less like volume, although it is very dense. Um, so I had to pretty much triple my cake sponge recipe in order for me to make a pretty substantial headpiece. I also added an additional layer of buttercream on top of the apple compote before putting my sponge. I really wanted the buttercream to really come through in the layers. Now as I put on the buttercream, um, the camera's a bit far away, but you can kind of see it start to drip down the sides of the cake, and that's because my buttercream freaking split. It was really disheartening. 
I shoved it away into the fridge、um, and took it out later, but it was still very melty.、Um, but I ended up still going with it. Sculpting take two. I used the buttercream I made previously, so the unsplit version, and I was pretty happy to say that it went on pretty smoothly and neatly. I would say that this is my first successful crumb coat. This is actually like a cake pop mixture dough. I was going to mold like the branches of his head using this mixture. It was somewhat successful, but I made sure to set a few like clumps to the side that I would then attach to his head on a later step. Now to roll out the fondant. This was actually white fondant that I had mixed in、uh, black and brown food coloring. It came out mostly gray with like a tint of brown, and that's exactly what I was looking for. And I decided to lay down the fondant before I attached the branches to his head. I'm also proud to say that this is probably my most successful like fondant laying attempt. Everything came out really clean, so I'm very happy to report that. Okay, now things are about to get a bit janky, and this is when I started to get a little wary and nervous. I had mixed that cake pop mixture and put them on skewers, which I then attached to his head, and it ended up looking really psycho. Like I also had wanted to、um, put in like markers of where his eyeballs would be, and so it just looks really nuts right now. And I was getting super discouraged, but I tried to like half. Close my eyes during this whole process, which is probably not what you want to do. But he did end up looking like a familiar meme. Apologies for not showing、um, more of my fondant laying and detail carving. You can see it kind of jump forward a bit,、um, but I was starting to feel a little bit better. I have a bad tendency to kind of shut everything off when I'm not feeling in the mood, but I really need to stop doing that, especially when I'm trying to do this as like a full video to show everybody my process.、Um, so I'll try to be better about that next time. But at this point, you can see that I was getting a lot happier with how he was looking. I would say my strength,、um, as it was in the beginning, and still is now, is really when it comes to like carving in the finer details.、Um, it's almost therapeutic to me, and I can go at it for hours. Here is what I have so far. I'm definitely feeling pretty happy about it. He does look a little bit goofy, like a certain wrestler at this moment, but carrying on.
Today's like day three, I think, of working on the cake. Um, for today, I will be attaching the rest of his beard, and I think I'm gonna start painting, which is probably the part that I'm most excited for, because then I could really see him coming together. I'm pretty happy with where he is now. I feel like I have this issue where I make their faces just too wide. It's kind of hard because his face is kind of like a upside down triangular shape. He has a narrow face, but I keep wanting to like build out to really show like all of his branches that lay on top of his head. Um, so hopefully once I put on his like actual beard, um, that that should balance out the wideness. I also have to mention, I've realized a pattern when it comes to making these cakes. Like the very first cake I did was the Necronomicon and I kind of breezed through that really easily, but I think it's also because it's a book and it's rectangular and it's structurally it's not too difficult to work with. But when it comes to things that have a more organic shape, um, and where structure is super important. Um, this is pretty much the cycle where I start off pretty excited baking off the cakes, I stack it all up, but once I start actually sculpting and like laying down the fondant, I just hit this wall of, oh my god, what am I doing? This actually looks super terrible and not what I imagined at all. And I just have that freak out with every single cake since the Necronomicon. I guess that's just a part of my process now and it's totally fine because after I keep working on it like I'll have a freak out, I'll procrastinate a bit because when I think of the project it just fills me with dread and then once I just you know put my head down and keep working on it I eventually start to fall in love with it a little bit more plus like major sprinkling of motivation and kind words from my husband. Um, but I think that's just something I'm gonna have to expect now every time I go into a new cake. But I will say my track record so far has been pretty okay. That said, let's get to finish sculpting and painting. Before sculpting the rest of his beard, I realized that his forehead looked a little short. Like if you look at pictures of him, he has a very long forehead. So I decided to add a bit more fondant. Yes, not super tasty, but I really needed it in order for him to look a little bit more like otherworldly. To start his beard, um, I first laid down a base that I could then put like more of the branchy tentacly bits of his beard. Um, just so that it would hold up in a more like sturdy way. These are the tentacly bits that I made. Um, I wanted them to dry out a bit so that they would hold their shape more when I attached them. Um, I probably didn't wait enough, but I was just too excited to hurry up and start painting. I'm using a green edible airbrush paint again, um, also using some food coloring. Um, so he is the green knight, but he is more of a natural green and not like a bright Kelly green that you usually see for like St. Patty's. Um, so I really wanted to make sure like he was blended and more natural looking. So I did go in and kind of rub off parts that looked a little bit too bright green and went in with a lot of like browns and yellows to give him a more woodsy look.
My favorite part of painting is probably the very little details, just like how I am with sculpting. His eyes did come out a little bit wonky. I must say that, you know, they're looking in slightly different directions. Um, trying not to worry about that too much. I also wanted to mention how satisfying it was to put in all the brown details of his sunken eyes and the cracks of his skin. And I'm done and here he is he looks a bit cabbagey I got comments that he looks like an artichoke or even Brussels sprouts and I'll just take that as a compliment um, I am really happy with how he came out I don't know what the top of his head looks like but I think I did a decent job cake is finally done although I have to say it probably only took me three days and just a few hours on each of those days he was probably the fastest cake I've made yet and speed really isn't my goal it's just that I get super pumped while I'm working on him at least when it's going well and I tend to just kind of speed through it it does make me more confident in the future if I do have like a time crunch that I'm able to bang it out. Um, but in any case, I should probably take it a bit slower so I get the basics right. I did struggle with him like internally as well as like with his horns. So I'm a little nervous to cut him open to see what he looks like, but we're just going to do it. Like, I don't know if you can tell, but He's actually sagging a bit here because when I was trying to transport him, um, at least before I laid the fondant, it crumbled a bit. And so that really kind of messed with um, any sturdiness that was there with the cake layers. So I'm going to try to focus more on the part that isn't sagging when it comes to cutting him up. I'm guessing, I guess maybe his face would be good. All right, no time to think. Let's just do it. And we'll do like a wide cut. All right. Okay, not bad, not the prettiest. I feel like the apple chunks didn't really come out, but that's okay. Yeah, not the prettiest layer, but let's get to tasting. Today is actually St. Patrick's Day, so the timing of everything worked perfectly. I had originally wanted to make him for like the spring equinox, although technically the movie's a Christmas movie, so everything's kind of fudged up, but taking advantage, it's St. Patty's, everything's super green, so very happy with that. Let's try this cake. That can really taste like the cinnamon and the nutmeg. And there is like a chunk of apple in there. Like you can't really see it when you look at it because it got a little smushed and the buttercream split a little bit. But you know what? I didn't use very much oil in baking the cake. So the cake wasn't very fluffy. It was in fact quite dense. I think the buttercream splitting was, I mean, obviously it's a mistake 
but it ended up kind of rehydrating the cake sponge with the melted butter so what better way to moisten a cake but yeah very happy with how it tastes i would say that this is a pretty successful cake all right guys that means this is the end of this video i hope you enjoyed watching thank you for sticking it through to the end again um if you liked it please remember to like and subscribe to my channel it would really help me out and i'm sure i'm gonna have a lot more cake adventures and food videos coming up um so if you could join me along that would be great all right i'll see you guys next time bye